Hey, what up guys? Doing another What's Next. This is on Jason Rosario, the unified super welterweight world champion at 154 pounds. He's currently my number two super welterweight in the world right now. He's coming off of his career best win, a major upset of Julian J. Rock Williams on um, in January, on January 18th. Um, on a Fox card where he just kind of came out of nowhere. He was a big, he was an unknown fighter. Came out of nowhere and, and and knocked out Williams in only five rounds. Pretty impressive win and captured the unified junior uh, super welterweight titles. Now, um, the big question is, well, J-Rock turned down the rematch, uh, an immediate rematch clause he had in a contract. J-Rock turned that down. So now the big question is, what's next for the unified champion Jason Rosario. So, start with number one, WBC champion Jermel Charlo. Um, we know they were talking a little over a month ago. There was talks of this fight taking place. Um, you know, haven't heard anything since. I actually only heard that Charlo is talking to Arizlani Lara now. So maybe things didn't go as well as planned. But I think there's also the the possibility that he that he might have to make an IBF title mandatory defense next. So that he might be wanting to hold on to both belts, and maybe that's why it didn't work that work out. Not sure. I'm, I'm I'm thinking Charlo's talking to other people right now instead, but I definitely think this fight's possible because he's a unified champ, and Charlo would just be adding titles, and I really think that's what Charlo wants. So I definitely think the fight's possible. Right now, I think it's about 50-50, though, so we'll see. Number two is Rosario. Number three. A rematch with former unified champ J Rock Williams. Not going to happen. J Rock uh, passed up on the immediate rematch clause in a contract, so this fight, no way it happens next. Number four is former unified champion Jared Hurd. Um, if, if Rosario wanted the fight, he could probably get it. Um, unless unless the IBF is, 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 is going to be stern and make him make a mandatory of his belt against his number one contender. I'm not going to mention his number one contender's name because that dude's name's all fucked up. So, um, it's Kudratio something, I think. And it's just a fucked up name. So I'm not really going to say that guy's name that much. Um, if the IBF is going to enforce him to make a mandatory next, then um, if he was willing to give up that belt to face Jarrett Hurd, very possible because Hurd is the number one contender in the WBA right now, the other belt that Rosario holds. So it is possible, but I'm going to lean towards the less likely because I think he's going to try to get somebody else. But Hurd is still a big name, especially a big name to him. So I definitely think that fight could happen. Um, number uh, five is WBA regular champion Arizona Lara. Well, I guess that fight's possible, but it looks like Charlo's looking at Lara right now as a possible option next. So if Charlo passes on that and he passes on Rosario, could the two lock up? Yeah, I mean, um, Lara's the regular champion and Rosario's the super champion. So definitely possible, but then again, that also varies based on... Um, if the uh, the W if the IBF is going to mandate Rosario to make that defense against that Cujatillo guy, so we'll see. Number six is Brian Castaño, the undefeated uh, a former WBA champion. Not going to happen. Castaño's fighting for the WBO title next against Patrick Teixeira, so I'm not seeing this one. Um, number uh, seven is former WBC champion Tony Harrison. Um, I guess the fight could be possible if if both sides wanted it. I mean. I think Rosario would be down. Harrison's a former champ. He was in a big fight with Charlo. I think he might go after Charlo first, but if he if Charlo passes on him, I think uh, Tony Harrison would be a good option. But would Tony Harrison want that fight? Um, you know, Rosario looked really good against J-Rock and knocked his ass out. Would Harrison want to take that risk? I'm leaning towards the less likely, but they're both with PBC, so you never know. Number eight is WBO champion Patrick Teixeira. Not going to happen. Teixeira has to make a mandatory next against Brian Castaño, so this fight's not possible. Number nine is, excuse me, former world title challenger Terrell Gachet. Gachet is with the PBC. Um, you never know. Maybe if Rosario can't land nothing else, you never know. But I, I, re I really doubt um, him and Gachet get together next because Gachet is kind of a, a high risk, low reward type opponent because. He's, uh, he, you know, he's not a big time name, so I don't see it. And then finally at number 10 is former world title challenger, Erickson Lubin. Um, fight's definitely possible, but I don't think it's likely just based on the fact that um, uh, Lubin is lining himself up to, uh, for, to become the WBC interim champion um, and possibly face the, whoever the WBC champion is after that. 
Um, but I don't think that um, that uh, these two guys are likely to face each other because of that. And then also, he's with the PBC, but would he want to take a risk against a guy of Lubin's talent and he's not a big name either? I don't think he's going after that next. So um, what do I think Jason Rosario is going to do next? To be honest, I, I really think it's either going to be a, a unification or a showdown with, with, um, with uh, Charlo. Um, Arizona Lara or Jarrett Hurd, I think, are probably the three biggest options and fights that he could probably get if he wanted them. And if not, then he's probably going to have to make an IBF mandatory against that Kudra Teal guy who's undefeated. So that's what I think is next for Jason Rosario, the unified super welterweight world champion. That's his what's next. He's my number two super welterweight in the world. Hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.